Welcome to the Hello First Name Podcast. The Hello First Name Podcast revolves around the term personalization and is brought to you by marketing author Rasmus Holin, founder of Omnichannel Institute and chief experience officer at the marketing automation software company Agilic. The podcast is based on the book Hello First Name. Each episode is based in turn on a chapter from the book, followed by a discussion of the very same chapter with an expert marketing practitioner in the following episode. As always, you can buy the book on Amazon or other bookstores. You can also choose to listen to it all for free on your favorite podcast service. You're also very welcome to download the abstract of the book for free, and all models, of course, are able to download. All downloads are sponsored by Agilic. I'll make sure to put a link to everything in the show notes. But you can always connect on LinkedIn, and I'll be happy to reply and help out. Hello, and welcome to the Hello First Name podcast. Uh, today we'll be discussing chapter nine from the book Hello First Name. The chapter is called Personalization in Campaigns. Uh, and uh, to help us along with that discussion and get a practitioner's uh, perspective on this, uh, I have uh, here in the studio with us Mass Jefsen, uh, marketing director at uh, FC Copenhagen or FCK, as they're called uh, here in Copenhagen. Mass, uh, welcome to the show. I'm really glad you could uh, take the time to join us. Thank you so much. Pleasure to take part. And uh, today's a special day because we, yesterday something fantastic happened. And uh, what was that? Just an ordinary day in Parken. Yeah, no, it was... Uh... <laughs> Another great European night in Parken, uh, a big uh, Champions League clash against Galatasaray. And we, yeah, we are on to the knockout stages of Champions League. So the Champions League magic continues in, in Copenhagen in uh, the beginning of, of the new year. Yeah, so That's very fantastic. exciting. Long yeah. day, long night, but uh, it was great. Congrats on that. Uh, I mean, obviously you're in the commercial part and not so much in the player part, but things no. fit, fit together like, uh, like hand and glove. And uh, yes. actually, I was in Parken also watching the match, and it was incredible. Wow, yeah. Crazy so, atmosphere, yeah. yeah. We're not going to talk so much uh, about what's going on uh, on the pitch uh, today, but much more talk about how you and your team are working with uh, personalization within campaigns, which is yes. uh, related to the to the chapter, the audiobook chapter uh, mm. that uh, we released uh, last week. So... Uh, so, so you've been working at FC Copenhagen Mass for actually more than four years now. And before that, I saw that also you've been in the, the publishing industry. But maybe in your, in your own words, can you tell us a bit about yourself and, and your career? Yeah. Yeah, as you said, I've been uh, coming up close to five years. I think it'll be five years in FC Copenhagen in, uh, in February. Uh, so actually quite some years now. Uh, before that, I was in, uh, in a publishing house, uh, part of people group called People's Press. Uh, working as, uh, working as a, ma a marketing manager, both with physical books, audio books, etc. Um, yeah, but always been uh, a big football fan myself. Uh, also had football, so one thing is playing and enjoying the game. But part of my my life, my upbringing, since my my dad is a football coach and professionally mm. has been my whole life. So yeah. that part of football being being. Yeah, work as well uh, is something that's been close to me. So always a big dream to to work with football. And unfortunately, my skills on the pitch uh, <laughs> couldn't help me. Uh, but uh, yeah, work. I a marketing role uh, in the club. So I started yeah. in in FC Copenhagen in in the role uh, a campaign manager, um, and now I'm the marketing director here at the club. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's a uh... That's a wonderful thing. I mean, obviously, the the passion that is within football is is shining through also in the way that you're talking about it, and and obviously what happened uh, last night and what will hopefully yeah. uh, continue to happen. So I think that's that's a very special thing, getting the purpose and the uh, really getting the emotions and the, and the feelings to be part of what you do. Uh, everybody, I I think everybody um, should should try that uh, once in a while. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so how has the journey been with FC Copenhagen for the last four years? I know it's a big question, but just, I mean, did you were you at nowhere four years ago in terms of a Martech setup and and stuff like that, or and are you finished now, or, or, or where do you see yourself sort of on the journey towards everything being hyper personalized? Yeah, um, I mean, a big part of sort of the identity and, and, and uh, values within FC Copenhagen is definitely like 
we're never satisfied. So uh, I'm definitely not where we need to be, and we probably never will. Uh, but but a lot has happened over the past, yeah, four to five years. Uh, so sort of in my time at the club, but also before then. Um, and what sort of when I started at the club. We had various roles around marketing, but people also doing uh, different uh, work on the side of that. Uh, and a really well-structured marketing team was sort of a yeah, part of, of what I was uh, helping to uh, bringing to to, uh, to the club uh, mm. and building that up. Uh, and parts of that also being around uh, marketing automation and, and, and beginning focusing very much on email marketing. Um, mm. When I joined the club, we uh, there was a big project going on together with our digital partner net company um mm. to actually sort of consolidate uh, all the data points we have structure build some structure around it but then from a marketing perspective also putting a marketing platform on top of that to actually uh, put those data points into action uh, mm. and that was sort of where we chose to uh, to start working with you guys in uh, Jilic uh, yeah. and uh, came from yeah from a pretty standard setup working in in Mailchimp uh, and and doing yeah. a lot of campaign emails to where we are now it's a lot more uh, yeah utilizing the data we have uh, that yeah. that comes with having a big fan base and a lot of interactions uh, with with our fans a lot of engagement um but yeah seeing that and 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 seeing the potential was one thing but then also having the structure around the data to actually utilize it yeah. and, and create those use cases uh, is something we've your, data, your data model must be crazy i mean i, yes. I think your um, maybe your business model is maybe one of the most complex actually that uh, that i can think of uh, some extent of course but i mean you're covering everything from the matches uh, the ticket sales Home away games, subscriptions, sponsors, merchandise, food and beverage, etc. And you even have a FCK Plus uh, as a media subscription on top of yes. all the other subscriptions that you have in the yes. season passes. And how, how do you how do you manage this complexity? It must be. I mean, you go into work, and where do you start? Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's a, you're describing it pretty well. It's a it's a big complex system, uh, and of course, as you said, we are. In the marketing team, a supporting role for all those business areas. Uh, so we do a lot more than just sell tickets and shirts. Mm -hmm. uh, that is definitely a very big part of the business. But sponsorships as well uh, is one thing. But actually activating those brand partnerships. So how do we get the brands uh, that we're working with to come to life uh, and engage yeah. with our brands? Uh, yeah. It's also something we do within the marketing team. And then, of course, there's the whole subscription yeah. model. So I think... One way to actually get some structure around it, in my head at least, is always trying to take the perspective of the fan uh, yeah. and, and not seeing it as also, uh, all the systems, but like how do I engage with the club? What is my the, the various touch points and how how is this giving product or service relevant at a given time? Um, yeah. There's also a lot of seasonality to football, of course. Uh, there's mm. results on the pitch that fluctuate uh but yeah and that definitely um affect uh our work in the marketing team and communications yeah. team a lot so yeah. yesterday is a good example it's a big 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 win a historic win for the club oh, um, yes. that creates some potential uh it creates potential to sell champions league merchandise just after the game but yeah had we not won that moment we needed to to do something different yeah and we needed to not do the campaign plan. Uh, you can plan different scenarios, uh, mm. but but you also have to have that perspective from the fan because the let's take the game yesterday as an example again. That defines sort of the your uh, attitude towards the club for the coming days, weeks, months. Uh, yeah. So we need to be able to to use that as a filter for for relevance at some level. Yeah. Obviously, so you mentioned briefly sort of the. Uh... The subscription part, and, and we're also going to talk about season passes, I think. So mm. can, can you tell the audience a bit about what is the difference between a ticket subscription and a season pass? Yeah. Uh, I'll try to keep it very simple and, and <laughs> easy to understand. But, I mean, it's quite basic. A season ticket is a pass that gives you access for a season. 
So yeah. from the first game to the last game. Yeah. So when the last game is played, home game, you need to renew that season pass when we ask you to to renew it. Mm. Uh, whereas the subscription model, we have various subscription types, but subscriptions in general, uh, it doesn't have that renewal phase. It doesn't start, or it, well, it does start at the point, but it doesn't end <laughs> until you yeah. Uh, you yeah you cancel your, subs- your subscription. So okay. Meaning for us, we don't have that renewal phase that always comes with some level of uh, risk. Of course. Um, and and you as a fan, you don't have to uh, to um, yeah to go through a renewal phase. Yeah. Uh, Probably also easier to sell a ticket subscription when you're at the end of the season than selling a season pass when the season is almost uh, over. Yeah, because the well the games have been played and that's the primary part of the 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 product. Uh, yeah. So. But whereas you can sell subscriptions uh, any day of the year, of course, there's periods where it's more relevant than, than others. But if mm. you buy a subscription now, you you know you have access for the rest of the season. Well, there's no more yeah. uh, in, in in this year, but next year, uh, half of the season, but also yeah. the next season. And yeah, so it's a lifelong pass uh, yeah. Yeah, if you don't cancel it. And then you have this plus thing on top. Yes, and and that's an extra add-on subscription that I can choose to pay for, along with my ticket subscription on my season pass. Uh, well, no, and yes. Uh, so, FCK Plus is a subscription product in itself. Mm-hmm. It's basically a type of membership, you could call it. Um, the difference between our season tickets and and uh, and other subscription products is that FCK Plus doesn't give you uh, access to parking, uh, but it gives you a discount on t- one ticket for our home games in the Super League. Uh, it gives you a discount on our merchandise, um, and it gives you some yeah various other um, um, values uh, or what you call it. Um, so some unique content, I believe, if I'm yes, not mistaken. You, you get yeah. access to to all of our exclusive content, uh, both in our yeah. app and and uh, and the web based uh, TV yeah. uh, universe we have. Um, and then you also get access to buy tickets for 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 some of the games before others. So, it's, ah, yeah. so it's, it's, getting it's, the it's Champion a, League tickets is certainly a big thing. Then, yeah, obviously, so it's a good sort of base membership if you don't have the need to have a a seat in the stadium for every game, but you want to yeah. be close to the club. You want to see all yeah. the content. You want yeah. when you go to parking, you have a discount on your tickets, uh, and you know you have have you earn your loyalty points, so you can actually buy tickets yeah. for, for the games you want. Uh, and some of those, um, for example, the, the access to the exclusive content is also part of the other subscriptions and, and uh, season passes. So you, okay. as a season ticket holder, you don't have to buy that on top. It's part of your product yeah. as well. Okay, yeah, that way, yeah. It sounds like the ideal subscription if you are maybe not living in Copenhagen, for instance, say that you're an expat, you're living abroad, but you're still an exactly. FCK, uh, FCK yeah. fan yeah. at heart. Exactly. All right. So that's so definitely in- one one yeah interesting segment for that product. Uh, talking about segments uh, later. Uh, so just staying at the high level, uh, just for for a bit here. What does success look like for marketing at FC Copenhagen? That's a big question. I mean, um, I'm just thinking that you may be operating with you know uh, keeping fans happy and the experience and so on and so on. But also you have a lot of places where you can make money. So how do you sort of balance that? Maybe that's the a better question. Um, it sounds a bit cliche, but I think always, yeah, challenging yourself to remember that you're working with fans, not customers. Uh, of yeah. course, fans know that they are customers as well. Uh, mm-hmm. But one thing is knowing that another thing is being treated as a customer or a fan. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's not an easy balance uh, because, of course, we have a, as a commercial. Uh, in the commercial part of of the club, we uh, we have revenue we, that we need to generate, and we have uh, yeah. a lot of uh, business areas that that need to grow. Um, but remembering that our, in this case, customer base, fan base, are for the most part lifelong customers. So the level yeah. of loyalty and dedication to to your product and 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 this whole uh, identity around the club 
is is for for most people it's a lifelong uh, and for for a lot of people it's something they didn't even choose it's the club that chooses you because you're brought up yeah. in Copenhagen and and yeah. maybe you're passed on by your 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 family um yeah so so respecting that but also viewing that as a uh, uh, the potential that comes with that um, yeah. is something that we always need to remember uh, uh, while we also need to to commercialize on those opportunities. Yeah, great, thanks. Uh, so the chapter from Hello First Name that we are discussing today is called Personalization in Campaigns as opposed to Personalization in Marketing Automation and Personalization in uh, on-site or in-app. Uh, and Matt, you're one of the people actually that I interviewed before me and my co-authors and I, we conceptualized the, the bow tie personalization, the, the model, which sort of explains mm. what uh, personalization is. And um, in, in your words, how would you describe the term personalization? What, what, it, what does it mean to you? Yeah, um, I think the, the funny thing about personalization is, uh, I mean, when it's good, it's, you don't know because you shouldn't, in my opinion, be able to sort of realize that it's being personalized. It's just relevant mm. for you, yeah. uh, whether we're talking about an email or whatever it is. Um, but but from a sort of more technical perspective, marketing perspective, if it's of course utilizing the understanding of a given uh, person or segment, uh, person within a segment, uh, using that knowledge to actually increase the level of relevance of of the message that you're you're putting out, um, yeah. whether that be uh, wording or imagery or whatever it might be, but but just utilizing again those data points to to actually. Mm. Yeah, increase the relevance. Uh, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I think that fits fits fairly well. So we're uh, happy to see that we are sort of on on the same page uh, there. Uh, we do distinguish in the book also between like explicit and implicit personalization, where yeah. sometimes you might want to let the customer know that yes, this is personalized and it for you, and the reason we're telling yeah. you is because this. So I mean, say that people have I don't know. Maybe we'll get back to this example. People have bought tickets uh, like one by one for a while, and then. Maybe you tell them that you know this uh, mm -hmm. because you're gently watching them. You can actually see that it'd be better for them to have a ticket subscription. So that could yeah. be an example of explicit personalization. You could also make it seem like a coincidence that these people are now receiving emails about this topic and, and not say where you sort of got it from. So mm -hmm. that, that's uh, different tactics. We also distinct, distinguish between uh, campaigns and marketing automation. And uh, I was wondering what this distinction uh, means to you. When do you work with either or? When are you working with campaigns and when are you working with automation? Can, can you give some, some examples of that? Yeah, um, I think one Im uh, important note, uh, at least from, from when we talk automations, um, we have a lot of use cases that we could uh, and at some level want to automate. But due to the nature of football it we also <laughs> maybe we're holding back a little more than other yeah. companies would i think yeah. uh, meaning that whatever is like trigger based or event based that it's so defining the timing of that given message mm. whether that comes uh yeah at at a time where we are happy Losing or you know yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah so 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 i think there's there's a lot of those uh use cases that we actually could automate that we're still sort of more manually uh, running. Yeah. Um, but of course our, like a welcome program is, 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 is automated and, and what yeah. we basically try to do again, to personalize that from the beginning. Uh, mm. so, so primarily focusing on now you've, you've opted in, you want to receive our newsletter, what it might be, but then what are your preferences? If we already yeah. know, then highlighting yeah. what what some of the the news around the preferences you indicated, and if you yeah. haven't, then trying to navigate around that. Um, so if into merchandise, then you'll be putting merchandise in front of me more than say, I don't know, uh, subscriptions or uh, interviews with players or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And and then also, I think when we are, for example, in a uh, you could say it's still a campaign season ticket campaign, but but there's yeah. definitely a lot of automated uh, flows going on within that campaign 
yeah. because it's usually you have a renewal deadline, for example, and and we set up a, a given program for for various segments within yeah. that flow. Um, yeah. Reminding it's a good time you, in advance, you've already set up all the logic for how things are going to evolve and split and yes. orchestrate and stuff. Exactly. And then also, again, on the side of that, maybe complementing that with campaigns. So if, mm. if we suddenly, you're in the midst of a season ticket campaign and we win the championship, well, then it's definitely a good uh, thing to bring into play. Um, yeah. yeah. So you can plan a lot, but there's also due to the nature of, of football, yeah. There, there are a lot of unforeseen things that we need to to yeah. consider both positively and negatively yeah yeah it sounds like charming and stressful yeah. <laughs> uh, especially if it's not going so well on the pitch i guess you can take the happiness from a victory into yeah. the joy of uh, working late because you really want exactly. to give that flavor of, uh, of winning uh, into the yeah. campaign so but i think uh, at level we, we are still working with with sort of both campaigns and 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 a lot of uh automations uh yeah yeah and have yeah a bit of both and uh and so you're probably going to do a champions league uh knockout uh campaign sort of now uh i would assume um, I th- we had an email go out right after the final whistle yesterday um yeah. so of course preparing that yeah uh but it's not automated because you 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 need to see the result and hear the final whistle. Of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. But utilizing that momentum, of course, both to inform people about uh, the ticket situation and, yeah, and yeah. when you expect that, but also, yeah. again, we have products on shelf uh, with uh, yeah licensed mer- merchandise uh, through uh, yeah. Champions League. Yeah. Uh, so there's a big momentum there after the game as well. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, also from a sort of just the club congratulating the the city and the fans uh, yeah, is also yeah, part yeah. Of it. Uh, yeah, so, again, so it's just and, relaying and the feeling basically yeah. exactly that's great yeah that's very fun because in one of the other episodes we talked about sort of the the value of a campaign or the value of a message seen from the end customer point of view and i guess mm. especially with a product such as yours Sometimes it's, I mean, it's, it's not, it's it, obviously it's not all discounts. Uh, and I don't think you need to discount the, the Champions League tickets anyways. Uh, no. You could maybe choose to discount some of the merchandise because of the heavy occasion or whatever. But really just the experience or the like social value and feeling of belonging and, you know, yeah. just the communication and the experience in itself pointing people towards content that makes them feel good about the club. So really a lot of feel good communication or, practical communication as, as to how can I get a hold of the tickets or can I even do that? Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that that's uh, so you have, you have many strings to play on. I think that's where I'm getting at. Yeah. And that, um, that's what the, the point I had about how you engage with the club. You don't yeah. only want to uh, be viewed as a customer and, and only receive product uh, messaging from us, but yeah. also just, yeah sort of relaying that relationship with, with the fan base and, and congratulating the city and the fans, uh, yeah. showing some of the content from the game, uh, and, and that creates engagement, which yeah. also has value. And then, yeah. yes, there might also be Champions League products uh, in a given email, but uh, but there's also other stuff uh, around yeah. it. That's great. Yeah. And, and what happens if you don't, I mean, talk about the the practical info about people, how they can get their hands on the, the, um, the Champions League Champions League tickets, for instance, if you don't communicate proactively around those practicalities, what happens then? <laughs> uh, that would hopefully never happen because uh, then then we're we're not doing our job. Uh, yeah. But of course, it's I say that it was delayed for. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there's, there's such a demand, more. especially when we're talking Champions League, uh, yeah. that that we would uh, have. We probably already have a lot of emails in the customer service uh, asking yeah. for, for for tickets uh, yeah. for games, but we need to have a draw on Monday first, uh, so we don't yeah. know who we're playing yet. Um, yeah. But but we need to be quite proactive in in in. I think just after the game, we put out yeah. uh, yesterday that more information will be available after the draw on Monday, yeah. uh, and then yeah. sort of the plan for how we're we going to yeah. sell the tickets, um, because that's also not like. A very fixed process. It it really depends on the game and and everything. How mm. we 
approach the the ticket uh, sales uh, phase. I guess that will actually uh, potentially that can that can being very proactive in communicating about the practicalities of how you get a hold of tickets could potentially actually sounds like it could save you from a lot of uh, picking up the phone answering the same question. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. So a lot of calls, emails, and uh, and social media uh, yeah. requests for for information. Like if yeah. we are proactive and 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 clear in in our yeah. communication as soon as possible on something like this then uh, yeah we definitely avoid a lot of questions hmm. interesting that's actually another way of making money with campaigns or saving money with campaigns yeah that i actually didn't think about before that that could be in so that i need to put that put an order of that and put it in the in the next book actually so talk about uh, campaigns really much is about matching the segments with a, some kind of message variant that fits with that. Can you tell us a bit about what your sort of your main segments are and how you uh, personalize campaigns for them? Yeah. Um, I think we, we, we have a lot of segments and we also do a lot of testing before we choose to call something a segment. Uh, mm. Just having hypotheses, testing them out. Um, but of course... You could see like there's a fan base in broad terms, the season ticket holders and uh, the subscription holders. And within yeah. that, then there's the different types of season tickets, different yeah. types of subscriptions, um, FCK plus as a segment as well. Uh, then you also have, if you look at our uh, sort of our preferences, when you sign up for our emails, we're talking about sort of general news, fan shop, uh, kids and the family stand um we also have a fan panel so people signing up to actually yeah taking part in surveys and 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 yeah. uh, and and helping us uh then of course from the ticketing side um uh, there's a we some of the segments we're working with is um of course people that buy for for a specific number of games so if you buy yeah. between like three to five or seven uh, single match games per season yeah. well then it's a level of maturity for a subscription where it's also yeah, financially yeah. makes sense for you to actually consider so yeah. going back to the point that subscriptions is something we can sell all year round it's a yeah. good segment for us because we know that when you're in that segment yeah. then we will probably deliver an email or something uh or yeah. paid uh at I think I would even call that a moment of truth. So it's a very dynamic segment because the moment that you've bought that many tickets within a certain amount of period of time, yeah. then that's a moment of truth where the customer should be interested in having a ticket subscription. Then also looking at pricing. So people that buy expensive tickets, people that buy ah, yeah. uh, lower priced uh, tickets, the various stands we have also yeah. represent uh different experiences. Something that yeah. we have really been focusing a lot on is actually to to ask people when they, for example, when they come to our uh, season ticket site um, to get information, then give us an indication of what sort of experience are you looking for? Is yeah. it uh, drums and, and flags in section 12 or is it the family stand or is it VIP experience with hospitality? Yeah. How many games? Uh, and of course, it's a service for you as a fan mm. because we can help guide you to the best stand and product. Yeah, but for us, it also me. gives a lot of data that we can actually use in our um, yeah, campaigns uh, for, for this given. So it gives a, a good profile. Uh, so you have different on, ways of selling the season pass, for instance, Yes, depending on my segment. Yes, and, and also utilizing that data within the actual communication. So... One example being for again season ticket campaign. Well, if if we if we don't have a sort of a preference for one of the stands, we're probably going to show you a bit of everything and and get you to actually give us an indication within, for example, yeah. an email. What is the most yeah. interesting experience for you? If we yeah. have that preference, then everything from yeah images and and videos and whatever yeah. is in this email will be specifically focused on that given experience yeah. so if we know that you have visited section 12 before or you which been, is where the diehard fans go yeah, uh, yeah or you've been visiting the landing page for for products in section 12 well then we will show you the atmosphere uh, from that yeah. given stand but also talking about the specific products we have in that stand because yeah. we don't have the same products across all 
uh, categories. Um, yeah. Actually, I can see the section behind you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but that I is the that sh- you would uh, you would show. Um, exactly. Yeah. So so actually getting that preference for what sort of experience is is a big yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, point for us to to get that because then we can filter. Uh, yeah. the rest out and, and be more relevant on what you're actually looking for. Um, I think it works because it seems like you're trying to actually hit the emotions that I would get when I go there. Yeah. So the uh, so the images of the section and how everything is booming and uh, even the, the occasional uh, smuggled in uh, firework uh, adds to this. That. We're not allowed to, but uh, yeah. Obviously not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, that, that adds to, uh, to the emotion. And if 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 I can get some sort of if I can recall that emotion from the creative images and the text that you're showing me, I think there's a higher chance that I would actually take you up on the on the offer. And I think that's it's quite basic remembering that sort of the product here is not the subscription, it's the experience in parking. So yeah. What, yeah. are we are we talking about products or prices? Uh, products and prices, or are we talking about the experiences that you're actually getting and then of course, the subscription yeah. or the season ticket or what it might be is the yeah. token to 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 get that experience. Uh, so you sell me the experience, I buy the product. So that's yeah. we made a very conscious decision to to try to to focus a lot more on uh, experiences, and then when we know what you're looking for, then we can show you the products and the different prices that are mostly relevant for you and that given experience. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Cool. Uh, you would. Earlier, you were mentioning actually that you are using a lot of different channels to communicate to to the fans. Yeah. And how do you choose which? And in a, in a campaign period such as maybe the seasonal campaigns or any other campaign for that matter, how mm. do you use the insights and the segments to also help you choose channels, or or do you do that at all? Yeah, we do. Uh, I mean, we of course we now we for season tickets, for example, we build up a pretty good process that we have been doing quite a few times that we trust and we don't try to do things like completely different uh, every year because we know we have a good model that works. Um, So some channels are also very prominent in that. But of course, we can also see that different parts of some of the fans, they don't, if you don't open an email, but you respond to an SMS, then why don't we send an SMS? Or if you if you usually open emails, but you at some level you you don't open the emails um and we see that you have the app we can send you a push notification uh, yeah. and i think also actually when we started this whole journey over the past four five six years mm. uh, utilizing page uh, paid ads as well um yeah. and and that whole connector through to, to actually utilize the data in that as well uh was a big Thing for us where we really yeah had success um yeah. which also means that if you don't open emails for example you will probably see an ad on on facebook and instagram for for yeah. a given uh, product um but also using that as an extra reminder sometimes for people yeah, so yeah. even though we so have your more email, energetic effect. yeah exactly so we're actually willing to pay uh, to show you an ad even though we can send you emails uh sms push etc because, for example, for a season ticket renewal, it's, it's quite a lot of money, and that 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 yeah. deadline, uh, we are we're willing to to invest in that extra little notch uh, yeah. for you to. So uh, people that you believe should buy a season pass, yeah. you yes. might turn on ads for those yeah. particular. In addition to the owned media communication, when yeah. you're drawing to near the ends of the uh, uh, of of the period in which you're selling it. And then uh, again, when we choose channels, it's also looking at. So are we creating something for for reach or relevance or is it revenue? What are we doing here? Uh, yeah. And and is it sort of core fan base or do we have ambitions to to build a story nationally or internationally? Then also building yeah. the channels around that, because of course our own platform, so our website, our social media, we have quite a big following uh, and yeah. a lot of engagement. So we utilize our own platforms a lot. We're not that uh, dependent on external media sometimes yeah. but for some stories we definitely need to be yeah in another context that has a different reach and a different segment um, yeah. yeah 
All right. So talking about personalization, sounds like you're actually doing that quite a lot. And and within campaigns, do you have any measure of which kind of uplift the personalized approach gives you, or are you just really doubling down on that this is the right way to go? Or I think actually when we started, it's it it's the main criteria for us was relevance. So yeah. nurturing that relationship with fans that you don't want. Uh, us to try to sell you a platinum card if you already have one. That's a quite a basic thing. Yeah, uh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. But also, again, another example: if we're trying to sell you a jersey uh, with yeah. uh, with a name and number, then we might as well show it with your favorite player uh, yeah. instead of uh, cool. yeah, instead of nothing. Um, yeah. But but again nurturing that relationship and making sure that the information we give you because some of our marketing uh, emails for example is almost it, there's a lot of service information in that as well yeah. because you're actually nurturing that lo- lifelong relationship yeah uh, by treating so people probably we're spending quite a lot of resources in in informing and 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 yeah sort of showing processes for a given ticket the sales phase and that doesn't necessarily have a clear call to action, but it's again, mm. it's nurturing that very long, yeah. loyal uh, relationship we had have, have with the fans. So it's um, a lot about TLV actually more than necessarily conversions. Yes, um, yeah. but but again, then you also have more like hardcore uh, campaigns where where we're definitely trying to to sell you something, and then we use the data we have available to create that in the most mm. relevant. Uh, way of course uh, hence the name of your book first name is is one thing but <laughs> yeah uh, for, for our start yes <laughs> but showing for example if we if we want you to buy uh, the new christmas jumper we have in the fan shop and we know that you're a season ticket holder and we know that you actually have a 10 percent discount then let's show you the discount code but also yeah. Yeah. if you have we have a thing called e-cash which is sort of it's a value you can spend at the fan shop if you have a yeah. platinum card yeah. then showing you the how much money is that is in in that account for you right now which yeah. you can actually spend um yeah there's a lot of different ways around it um and then also I, using... I'm, I'm not surprised that you are actually very famous within sort of the football community because all the stuff that you're mentioning here is wow that's a that's a lot of effort that you're putting into this and also with a with a sounds like more a firm belief that this is this will boost sort of the fan base and the customer lifetime value more that than a specific number on on how many percent uplift do we get when we are personalizing the way that we're trying to sell jerseys or whatever yeah i I mean one one good indicator i think we we spoke about this and i think it's even in your book as well is um is is actually the the effect that it has had on our uh, paid social as well. Uh, so we looked so, at some of the, yeah. the campaigns uh, where we're using our first party, first party data and, and actually how does that affect the return on ad spend? Yeah. And, and we saw a big uplift in, in those campaigns uh, measuring against campaigns where we're not use, utilizing those data points. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of related to that uh, is also actually being able to to is well it's not personalization but it, the exclusion of people uh, we had a big yeah. challenge with actually exposing people for messaging that was irrelevant due to the fact that they already bought a ticket for a given game or something uh, that yeah. if you have a short sales phase and a lot of tickets being sold every minute then you need to be able to make sure that those people that are, it, again it's a very basic thing but it's very important yeah. especially because you have uh, such a lifelong relationship with with the club that you yeah. need to be able to do that. I I I think it it is a textbook example. I mean, obviously, with your example also being in the book, uh, but still, I see a lot of companies that don't do this, and it's a it can be really annoying to get that thirty percent campaign thrown in your face when you just bought something at full price. And then yeah. you, I mean, or if you already have a subscription for fitness and then you get shown ads for having a subscription for fitness where it's cheaper or you could get the two first months for free and so on. That's a, that's just a pissing people off, basically. So but I think we're growing towards... Yeah, we, we, we're striving to do that. And, and uh, 
I think that's sort of the mindset and we're doing yeah. it, but, but it can always be a, a lot more um, effectful and, and relevant. All right, we're going, we're drawing towards an end here, Mess. I actually have one question that I always uh, ask towards the end. And uh, so in terms of your own favorite example of, uh, of personalization that you've experienced as an end customer, what would that be? I'm curious. Yeah, I was thinking about this and, and I kept going back to the point that I wouldn't know because hopefully I didn't see it. Uh, like <laughs> that, that whole experience of, of personalization, for me, the best example is, is when you don't actually know that it's being personalized because it's just so relevant how you're yeah. being presented a given uh, messaging. But I do, uh, of course, I, I sign up to a lot of newsletters for various uh, companies and then try to see and give all the, the data that I have and then see how they're actually utilizing this. And yeah. I think some people are, are quite clever in, in congratulating me when my daughter's birthday is coming up and uh, yeah. giving me a discount to actually yeah. buy her a gift. Um, yeah. That's also for me, it's a, it's it's testing out like how the, the level of of like how how long are you willing to go to to utilize those data uh, yeah. but, but for me i think the best example is when yeah when you don't actually see yeah. it uh, just becomes a part of you know removing friction yeah. and making it more smooth yes. and easy for you and i don't realize it's personalized but it's relevant for me yeah yeah exactly all right Thank you, Mess. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, that was uh, all for today. And um, to the listeners, I can say that I hope you enjoy uh, listening to me and Mess having this discussion. Uh, personally, I found it, I, I think you're doing so many clever things at FC Copenhagen. I've, uh, I'm not surprised that things are going well. Uh, obviously, not so much. on. Uh, I don't see this necessarily affecting what's going on on the pitch, but Things are really helping each other out in a, in a club like yours. So I'm 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 very proud to to have you here in the, in the studio, Mass. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously, uh, the ones of you who want to dig further in this, they can listen to the chapter that we talked about now, uh, personalization campaigns. That was last week's episode here on the Hello First Name podcast. You can find that on um, uh, on on Spotify or on uh, Apple Podcasts or whatever uh, podcast service that you like. Uh, all the illustrations uh, from the book uh, are available for download um, on uh, omnichannelinstitute.com uh, slash resources. I'll put a link to that uh, in the show notes. And uh, I think apart from that, there's um, uh, not much more to say than uh, Merry Christmas because this is the last episode uh, before Christmas. Uh, Mess, thank you so much for joining us. It was a huge pleasure discussing this with you. Very insightful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening in on this episode of Hello First Name. Remember that all models and even a written abstract of the book are available for download. You'll find the link in the show notes. In our next episode, which is a classical audiobook chapter, we'll be listening to Chapter 10, Insights Part 2, Moments of Truth. What is a moment of truth for the customer, for your business model? How can you identify them or perhaps even create them? And lastly, how do you tap into them to create value?